cars, but uh, uh, I've got a few of them that uh, ended up in the front of my race car over the years. But uh, you used to be able to do uh, skid pad testing out here, sure. too. So, But they also have a motorcycle school out here. And one of the features of race weekends is they have the Blaine's Farm and Fleet Motorplex, which is on the uh, the backside of the race track, just inside the carousel. I think I'm going to go and stuff Clagger into a barrier back there. After we're done <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking that uh, we could probably arrange that. But uh, they've, they're out there all weekend long. You can buy a weekend pass, and every ride's a, a couple of bucks. But it looks like one to go. Uh, on the back side of the racetrack. So Frank Kimmel, one lap down, going to lead the field back to green in front of Andrew Ranger, so your leader. We will go back green flag racing with three laps to go here in the Scott 160. We will come across to complete lap 37. Andrew Ranger currently scored as the leader, but he does have a freshly fueled and freshly tired Austin Dillon uh, right on the back bumper. Chase Elliott is going to be in the mix as well, as will be Chris Busher and Tommy Hessert, and don't know exactly what the mechanical issue was on Ryan Blaney. will be interesting to see if Blaney can get back in the mix and uh, make it a six-car battle for the lead here uh, in the win in the Scott 160. You know, and you take a look at uh, the fact that Ranger did stay out, and you know Elliott came in. You know that uh, that Dillon came in. Uh, it's certainly the 99 team, uh, Hessert in there as well, but uh, you know, with all of the the six cars in the lead lap, this is not over. It's a three-lap dash for the cash at this point. Uh, and as Clagger had happened to say before, that GWC, the green-white checker, a is a possibility. It's, we it's, talked about restarts. It was a remote possibility yeah. 20 laps ago. It's slightly Slightly. less remote now. But I have but, a feeling we are going to go racing three laps to the finish here. What's interesting to me as we come up the hill here to take the green flag Kind of a resumption of the battle from New Jersey Motorsports Park last year between Andrew Ranger and Chase Elliott. Now we add Austin Dillon into the mix as the green flag waves from the start-finish line here. Frank Kimmel leading the field across the stripe. Frank at the tail end of the lead lap. We see a battle up the hill and down into turn number one. Chris Busher took a peek to the inside of the 52 of Austin Dillon here. We got, no, we got cushion. I mean, contact down into turn number one. Exactly what Eric Miller thought we might see. It looked like a couple of cars came together. I think Chase Elliott may have come together with Chris Busher. We do see, uh, actually, I believe that was the 52 car of Austin Dillon that got sent off into the gravel outside of turn number one as Andrew Ranger now starts to pull away from the field. And it looks like we've got a good battle for that second spot between Chris Busher and Chase Elliott. Chris Busher, the ever opportunistic one on that restart, gaining a lot of ground all over the rear end at Chase Elliott now as they enter turn five. Looks like Tom Hessert really pushing the button there coming out of turn five, way off to the right side of the racetrack as Andrew Ranger now starts to open up the advantage on it looks like Chase Elliott has cleared the lap car of Frank Kimmel, as has the number 99 car of Chris Busher. Top three now running nose to tail as they make their way through uh, underneath the Speedville Bridge and now into turn nine through the carousel. Andrew Ranger continuing to stretch it out as uh, Chase Elliott trying, trying to catch all over the back end of Andrew Ranger. About through the Is carousel, that Ranger smoking? a little bit of smoke out of the back of the number 53 car. Do we have another major development as uh, could be some trouble on that number 53 car of Andrew Ranger? Also, but where he was in the racetrack, though, if it's not smoke, it could be uh, oil dry or stay I, dry, too. But that looks to bluish, a bluish hue there for like Andrew Ranger. Even down through uh, Kettle Bottoms there into Canada Corner does look like some smoke out of the back of the 53 car as we see Frank Kimmel dipping the left side tires off the outside of the racetrack out of Canada Corner. Kimmel still pushing hard, one lap down in the seventh spot as uh, the the sands have quickly slipped out Chris of the Busher hour graph. We see Chase Elliott now pressuring Andrew Ranger up the hill and across the stripe to complete lap 38. Two laps to go here repeat. in the Scott 150. Is this a repeat of New Jersey Motorsports Park from last year? Round two here. This time, Elliott trying to get the victory on Andrew Ranger here down in turn one. Elliott all over Andrew Ranger. Chase Elliott knocking on the back door of Andrew Ranger. This was... Uh, the inverse of what we saw last summer at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Chase Elliott was the driver up front with Andrew Ranger, the one 
pressuring as the laps wound down. That is the opposite here as we see now Chase Elliott pulling alongside off of turn number four, neck and neck down into turn five. Who's it going to be as we head into turn five? Elliott on the outside, though, as you make the left-hander into turn five under braking. Elliott on the outside and went wide, got a little bit of wheel hop there. Uh, trying to drive too hard on the outside, had to get back in line behind Ranger. That's it. Chase Elliott really did not have position on Andrew Ranger heading off into turn five, but Chase Elliott has not given up the fight all over through turn six and into turn seven. Can Chase Elliott maybe take advantage of that braking area down into turn number eight? Coming through the carousel, Elliott about a half a car length back, but Andrew Ranger pulls him off of turn eight through turn nine. Let's see if Elliott can get back to him in turn ten. One car that we just saw way off the pace here at the stripe was Austin Dillon. Austin, of course, the victim of that contact down into turn number one as we see Andrew Ranger kicking it off to the side of the racetrack there. It looked like Ranger kicking up some dust off of turn number 10 there as they now make their way again through Kettle Bottom. Still see those wisps of blue smoke off the back of the number 53. Don't know if that issue will manifest itself as they dive off into Canada Corner, but Andrew Ranger holding a three-car length advantage through turn 13. And they're coming to the white silk this time by, I believe. This will complete lap 39, headed to the final go-around. And, uh, of course, uh, Chase Elliott, fresh in his mind, I'm sure, is New Jersey. Goes to the inside of Ranger, off of 14, up the hill. It's going to be a drag race. Pushes Ranger wide down the front straightaway. We'll be side-by-side side here at the stripe, neck and neck as the white flag waves. We are working the final lap of the Scott 160. Give the advantage to Chase Elliott by a half a car length as they now dive down side-by-side side into turn number one. Will Andrew Ranger drop back into line behind Chase Elliott? Looks like he's not going to have a choice. Chase Elliott picks up the advantage down through turn two. Now off into turn number three. But can Chase Elliott? No, Elliott drifts up out of the groove into turn number three. That's going to allow Andrew Ranger to again look to the inside as now side by side off of turn number four. This time, though, it looks like Chase Elliott will have the preferred groove down into turn number five. But, wow, we had a very peaceful, calm first 39 laps. But these guys now trading paint as Chase Elliott will spin into turn number five. Elliott will Busher, get up the leader. lead, and the lead will now fall to Chris Busher as he looked to the inside of Andrew Ranger as we've got chaos on the last lap here at Road America. I just about said going through turn three that Busher had to be licking his chops watching those two go at it, and Elliott just pushed the button too soon and spun himself out. No contact in turn five. Elliott going around by himself, but Chris Busher picking up the pieces with that 99 crew. That's got to feel good for that team. Got to feel good to be up front, but we still have to settle the issue here as we work through the carousel. Chris Busher still has about a mile and a half to go and a couple of very difficult corners lay ahead, including Canada Corner here as Chris Busher has assumed the lead after leaders Chase Elliott and Andrew Ranger coming to loggerheads in turn five. But Chris Busher starting to stretch out the advantage through Kettle Bottoms. We mentioned Chris Busher, very good on road courses. Best finish third twice at New Jersey Motorsports Park, trying to get a little bit of redemption on the road courses. But Andrew Ranger putting a little bit of pressure on him, though. In the turn 12, though, it looks like Busher able to get on the power just a little bit earlier. If that rear end is slipping for uh, Andrew Ranger, it may have been uh, all for naught. But Busher coming to the final trip up the hill. That's right. Busher working his way out of turn 14. Sees the checkered flag in hand. How about it? Let's give the victory to Chris Busher here in the Scott 160. Checkered flag in the air. Busher will pick up the win over Andrew Ranger in second. And how about Tom Hesser coming back from... Uh, just an absolute devastating day on Thursday. Tom Hesser will round out the top three here today. And that's a huge, huge effort for champion last year, Chris Busher. Just his second ARCA Racing Series start of the 2013 series season. And uh, redemption, as we talked about last year in New Jersey Motorsports Park, Charlie. He had a car that looked like was going to win, ended up looping it around and rebounded to third. Well, Eric, you called it earlier today. You said there were two places on this racetrack that we needed to look out for, uh, for the big one. It was turn one and turn five. Now, granted, it didn't involve 
12 cars. But it sure was big, wasn't but it? But the two that it involved <laughs> were big. Leaders coming together on the last lap, Chase Elliott and Andrew Ranger racing side by side. And the surprising thing was Chase Elliott had the preferred groove, and it looked like he just drove it in maybe a few car lengths too deep, couldn't keep the rear end underneath it, and he went around. And that is what gave uh, the lead to Chris Buescher, who took advantage and drove on to victory. What it looked like happened was Elliott had the uh, the inside line, but it's not necessarily the preferred groove in the turn five. You want to make, because it's a 90 degree, you want to make a much wider entry sure. to the corner. So being tucked up against the rumble strip, it's real easy to put that left front or left rear on the and bunny hop it, and that's exactly what happened. It looked like the car kind of under braking, bounced a little bit, and then when he got back on the gas to try to save it, just got on it too hard and spun himself out.